Hi, this is Tony MacArthur in London with John Lennon. Every time the Beatles release an LP or a single, the pop music business usually changes direction. The changes instigated by their latest contribution, Abbey Road, will most certainly be noticed. In this show, John exclusively discusses the new Beatles collection, track by track. Well, John, the, the first track on the LP is the Come Together song, which is yeah. your vocal, and uh, is it in fact your, you wrote the song as well? Yes, yes. Uh, I've heard whispers that it's the, it will be the next American single. No, if, uh, if anything, it might be the B-side. I think we'll probably put something out as a single out there. I think that's about the best track on the album, actually, George's track. And they, they had it, you know how they always get our records before they're out over there somehow. We've got a spy in England who sends them the oh, tapes. Right. <laughs> and uh, they were playing something so, so much, they had a, an advance thing of it. They're red hot for it over there, so we'll probably release it over there as a single. I don't know what will happen here. Uh -huh. Now, the Come Together side is, um, is a fairly different song as far as the group's concerned. Uh, the Come Together track? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, you know. I mean, I think it's pretty funky, you know. I'm biased because it's my song. <laughs> I dig it, you know. And uh, it just I, it just happened well, you know. It's a nice, funky sound on it. Uh, what, what was the, the effect right at the beginning that we're going to hear in a minute, right at the beginning, the sort of uh, it's, whistling tone? Oh, it's me going... Shh, shh. On tape echo. All oh, right, <laughs> yeah. it's sort of compressed then, isn't it? No, it's not compressed. It's just I was sort of going through my hands like that. Great. Okay. Well, we'll we'll hear it right now. Come together. Next track is the one that we were talking about a moment ago, which is something, and, I, and I, I'm sure I agree that the, both George's songs on this LP are probably the most commercial he's written. Yeah. Is that a good or a bad thing? I think it's very good, you know, because they're, they're not sort of the good commercial, you know. There's still funky tracks, both of them. Yeah. Yes, well, uh, I'd imagine there'll be quite a few cover versions, as, as always, uh, for, you know, for singles off this LP, and it would seem that... Well, we'll get the first cover out. That's the point, you know, of something. <laughs> and that'll be the one in America. Yeah, so. White Trash have just done... Uh, oh, uh, what's the one? Uh, oh, Golden Slumbers, from the, the B-side of the track. Part of the sort of medley part. Yes. So they made quite a good version. That'll get plugged in for white trash. <laughs> Why not? Okay, this is George's song. It's called Something. Oh, well, this is, if you go through the LP from uh, top to bottom, it's Paul's first contribution, Maxwell's Silver Hammer, which is a, uh, uh, I don't know, it's fairly typical of a lot of songs Paul's written, John, do you think? Yeah, it's a typical McCartney sing-along, or whatever you call them. Oh. He, he did quite a lot of work on it. I was uh, in... I was ill after the accident when they did most of that track. And I believe they really ground George and Ringo into the ground, recorded it, you know. Uh, now that you know, you're all obviously occupied in diverse facets of the business, um, you know, are there any tracks that uh, any of you sort of have done on your own, completely on your own on this LP, or, or have they been a collective effort at some Not point? Not really, I wasn't on Maxwell. Mm. I think I was on everything else, you know. I was just away for that. Okay, Maxwell's Silver Hammer, Paul McCartney. It seems, John, that there's a, a very strong melodic tone, I think there always has been to your music, but in the context of other music that's going on today, uh, Abbey Road has got a lot of very strong melody lines, and I think it's probably not as powerful electronically as, as say, your last LP, or the Pepper outing. Well, maybe, I, I don't know, you know. Uh, what about the end of I Want You, you know? True, oh, yes. heavier than that, really. Yeah. But this, uh, and uh, of course, this track, the next one, Oh Darling, is. Uh, oh, yeah, that's. Uh, sort of 58 job, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, we like that stuff, you know. Oh, darling. So, uh, this uh, probably ties in with your recent outing in Canada, where you really. Oh, the got rock and roll revival, yeah. Yeah. It was fantastic, scene. You know. Um, what actually happened there? It was just a regular rock and roll type concert. Yeah, they had Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Little Richard, uh, umpteen others, and the Plastic Ono Band, which is me, Yoko, 
Eric Clapton, Klaus Vormann, the Manfred Man, and Alan White from Alan Price, or ex-Alan Price. And you did all rock and roll songs? Well, uh, when it gets down to the nitty gritty, I, only, I don't know the words to any songs. We ended up, I knew blue suede shoes from the 50s, you know. So we did blue suede shoes, money, dizzy. Uh, we did give a piece of chance uh, on a new song I'd written called Turkey. And uh, we really blew it, you know. It was a great scene. It wasn't going back. It wasn't like a revival. What we did was like... Yeah, we progressed. I think we were the only we progressives on it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but we ended up with a complete freak out with Yoko taking over, you know, and Eric and all of us just blowing the amplifiers as much as they'd go, you know. And uh, was there any rehearsal involved in this, or did you do that when you got We, we tried to rehearse on the plane, but it was impossible. <laughs> we couldn't hear a thing, because we didn't have any amps. And then we did one run-through at the backstage. We went right through the numbers once. But the group were so funky, you know, they just picked it up. You know. And is there any chance of this being um, a nucleus of a permanent Plastic Ono band? Or? Uh, it could be, you know, but, I mean, everybody's sort of contracted and all things like that, I suppose, Eric and everything. But I think the Plastic Ono band's going to be pretty flexible, you know, because it's plastic. <laughs> <laughs> But it is quite possible. I mean, it is, it's going to be a, a reality from now on, the plastic out there. Yeah, it's, until it's we get fed up with it, you know. Yeah. I'm enjoying it at the moment, you know. We made no plans to go to Toronto. A guy rang up and I thought, who can, who can I get, who will come and play live with me, you know? And they were the guys. You know. Is there any chance of, uh, of the, the Beatles playing live again? I don't know. There's always a chance, you know. But uh, the Beatles playing live is a different matter, you know. We've got that great thing to live up to. You know, yes. it's a harder gig, but just for me and Yoko to go out, you know, we can get away with anything, uh -huh. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, we'll get down to business with the Oh Darling track from Paul. Ringo's track is the next one, The Octopus's Garden, which reminded me, for some reason, of the Yellow Submarine <laughs> cartoon film. Yeah, well, I think it's the bubble bubble, you know, and the fact that it's under the sea bit. Uh, I suppose it is, really. Yeah. It we... doesn't have any other connection. No, separate is about the bottom of the sea, you know, and getting away from it all. And uh, th this is, in fact, the only song that Ringo wrote. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it'll be a few years before his production is going <laughs> as fast as ours. It took George a few years. And uh, is this the only track on the LP that Ringo sings on as well, John? Yeah, I think he done, does a bit of harmony here and there, because at the time I was away, they laid a few harmony tracks on some of the, the medley bit. Oh, yes. You know, so yeah. I think Ringo was doing a bit of harmony here and there, too. It's a, it's a pretty, it's a sing-along sort of song. It's a ring-along like sing-along. Ring yeah. 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 oh. Yes, very yes. good, folks. Yes. Uh, Octopus's Garden. I want you, she's so heavy. Um, Correct. Right, it's... I suppose it is the heaviest track on the LP, if we're going to get into that... Uh, you know, yeah. Bagism, is it? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty heavy, the ending, you know. Uh, could we use the Moog synthesizer on it? Oh, that's, that's what all that yes, electronic yeah, and bit it's, is. The range of the, the sound is from, you know, minus whatever to way over where you can't hear it, you know. The, the, that machine, the Moog synthesizer, can, yeah. can do all sound, you know, all ranges of sound. So we did that on the end. So if you're a dog, you could hear it a lot more. <laughs> So only dogs listening will get this together. Yes. Uh, John, would you speak about playing the uh, Moog synthesizer? I understand that there are there are or is a it's guy like in a the states robot, who know. who gets it together. Yeah, George can work it a bit. You know, I mean, uh, it'll take you all your life to learn all the the variations on it. But uh, George has got one, and uh, a few people in England have got them. And they're just sort of experimenting with them. He used it on the Billy Preston LP, and it also plays the, the solo in Because, and uh, I think in Maxwell it comes in too. It's here and there on the album. Yeah. So it's a matter of just sort of phasing it out to the sort of music you're doing at the time, is it? Or? Yes, yes. You, you can make it play anything, you know, any style or any, you know, freaky or just plain. You know, it sounds like trumpets and things yeah. if you wanted to. Can, can it, in fact, be uh, sort of set to play a particular pattern? Yeah, I, mean, I, think it, sort of... I think it just can go off on its own, you know. <laughs> I mean, you could get it to play Hare Krishna on its own forever, you know, and see and, what uh, happens to it. Uh, yeah, well, it sort of holds frightening prospects of a Moog synthesizer concert at some point. Yeah, well, I mean, that would be a, the, 
a great plastic ono band, you know, with a moose inside. They just went on and sang and played everything on its own. Because I suppose, you know, technically the notes would be all perfect anyhow, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. They just need one guy to switch it on, you know. And then leave. And yeah. Go and collect the tickets on the door. Yes. <laughs> OK, this is the track called I Want You, She's So Heavy. Well, at this point, we sort of get to turn the record over, and uh, the second George Harrison track is Here Comes the Sun, which is, again, another very catchy melodic song. Yeah, it reminds me of sort of Buddy Holly, in a way. No. Yes, I see what you mean. It's, uh, it, yeah. it's certainly that very strong melody line again. Is, is there any... Uh, I don't suppose there is any reason for when people write songs, but it, it seems such a dramatic change for George. I don't know, you know, I mean, it's just the way he's progressing. He's writing all kinds of songs, you know. I mean, once the door opens, it, it's the floodgates open, you know. You can't sort of... It's an effort to concentrate on writing certain kinds of songs, you know. Like, I prefer writing just non-melodic, straight rock, but I can't help writing other things, you know, and I think that applies to all of us. Just yeah. the songs just come out, you know. Uh, John, when you got this LP together, did, did you select from, uh, like, a large number of tracks, or did you virtually have a, you know... No, say... not from a large number of tracks. Uh, from a large number of songs, you see. Each of us have got, you know, maybe about ten songs to contribute to an album. You can't get them all on, so when it's your turn to record, as it were, mm. you've got to sort of pick the one you want on most, really. And so then, uh, I suppose it gets to a point of, uh, of musical balance of the LP too, does it? Yeah, it gets into that. Right. George Harrison's song, it's called Here Comes the Sun. The next track is, is another song of yours, John, that's called Because, and yes. I, I seem to detect some sort of classic overturn in this. Is this by design or...? Yeah, sort of, you know. Uh, Yoko plays classical piano and she was playing one day and... I don't know where it was, Beethoven or something. I said, give me them chords backwards. <laughs> and I wrote because on it, on top of it. Moonlight Sinatra. Oh, Moonlight Sinatra. Moonlight Sinatra. Sinatra. Backwards. <laughs> backwards. <laughs> something like that. It, uh, it also had the harmony structure is also um, slightly different from the some of the, uh, the harmonies that you've used in recording before. I wouldn't know, you know. I mean, I just asked George Martin or whoever's around saying, uh, what's the, the alternative to thirds and fifths? They're the only ones I know. And he plays them on the piano. We say, oh, we'll have that one, you know. So I couldn't tell you what they are. I just know it's harmony. You know. <laughs> right. Well, this is also a very long song, isn't it? It isn't, you know. It's only... It's amazing. It's, it's, it's the shortest one on the album. It's only about two minutes or something. Oh, oh, well, of course, it sort of gets into the... Uh, I, get, uh, I see what then you mean. It, it, it gets stops, the... and then he goes into the long... The, the into medley. The medley. You know. Ah, right. Now, the... Um, well, let's, let's get into it right now, and we'll talk about the medley in a moment. This is the song called Because... Uh, the medley comes next on the LP, and this uh, is really a, a sort of a, a whole piece of music joint. I mean, repetitive yeah. phrases come back all the way through it. Yeah. Uh, it was also a good way of getting rid of bits of songs we'd had for years. You know. So this is, again, was a, a collective piece of songwriting. There wasn't any... Yeah. I mean, George and Ringo, in, in fact, sort of wrote bits of it as we did it, you know. Literally, you know, sort of in between bits and breaks into it. Paul would say, "We've got 12 bars here. Let's fill it in," and we'd fill it in on the spot. You know. I've noticed a couple of the songs also uh, linked together. I mean, some of the characters. Oh yeah, well that was just luck, you know. I mean, the the bit my contribution to it is uh, Polythene, Pam, and here uh, Sun King, and I mean Mr. Mustard. So we just juggled them about till it made vague sense. And in Polythene, Pam, I mean Mr. Mustard, I said his sister Pam, and originally it said his sister Shirley in the lyrics, so I changed it to Pam and make, make it sound like it had something to do with it. OK, well, uh, we'll get into the first part of the medley, which is, um, uh, well, as we get into this, this is a sort of a, another scene with uh, Paul and, and this piano. Yes. First part. Was this Paul on piano? Oh, he's always on piano. You can't get him off. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you um, you never give me money. You're right. Well, the next track in the medley is the Sun King song. Um, uh, that's where we, we pretend to be Fleetwood Mac for a few minutes. <laughs> and then you get into a sort of a language thing, which I couldn't figure out if it was uh, some type of... Uh, oh, it's card, something, you know. Something uh, it, yeah. See, we did the, the introductions. We call it the Sun Riff. You know, the little instrumental bit that's like Fleetwood Mac before we start singing and we did it again on the end so when we came to sing it to make them different you know so as it wasn't just the same riff we just 
started joking, you know, saying, Cuando para mucho. So we just made up, Paul knew a few uh, Spanish words from school, you know. So we just strung any Spanish words that sounded vaguely like something. And of course, we got Chica Ferdi, and that's a Liverpool expression, just like sort of, it doesn't mean anything, but you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Chica Ferdi. The one we missed, we should have had paranoia, you know, but we <laughs> forgot all about it. We used to call ourselves Lost Paranoias. <laughs> and um, so then, what, you know, was the sort of any idea behind Sun King? Is that any sort of symbolism, or is it just. No, no, it was just a half a song I had, which I never finished, which was one way of getting rid of it without ever finishing it, you know. And it sort of, you know, the, so the sort of medley went and then we sort of wanted a change of atmosphere. So then here comes the Sun King, you know, why not? And here he comes and everybody's happy and... Cuando para mucho, et cetera, et cetera. Well, paranoia. Okay. Yeah, we well, might get a hit with that in those countries, you know, if they take it off separate. <laughs> it could, could, be, could be a smash in Brazil. Yeah, it? right. <laughs> the Sun King. And um, cake and eat it is another nice, nice line too, because <laughs> they have that in Spanish cake or something. But we just have cake and eat it. <laughs> okay, well we'll hear the track now called Sun King. Mean Mr. Mustard uh, reminded me of uh, the sort of songs that are probably about the revolver time. I think it was that sort of tempo and that sort of. Yeah. Um, is, was it a song that you had from way back? Or? Uh, I had it. I wrote it in India, so that was pre the, Be the Beatles double album, so it's that old. And it was from some newspaper clipping that the title was Mean Mr. Mustard about some guy had done something or other. You know, but of course the story's nothing like him, you know, just that was, it was like the newspaper title heading. Yeah, because in fact it's quite short as well. Yeah, it? well that's another half a song which I never mm. finished, you know, so I put it in there. Mean Mr. Mustard. From Mean Mr. Mustard straight to Polythene Pam, who turned out to be Mean Mr. Mustard's sister. And this is uh, sort of getting back into your actual rock and roll again, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit like everything, in a way, sort of not fade away and some, uh, you know, summertime blues and everything. That's another half a song I wrote in India, you know, about a kinky girl in a polythene bag, you know. <laughs> it was the pre bagism days, too, oh, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, in a polythene bags. See-through polythene bag. Yeah, right. Paper. That's what she wears, you know. <laughs> See it in drag in a polythene bag. <laughs> OK, well, we'll just uh, take a look at polythene Pam. Well, she came in through the bathroom window. I read somewhere in the press that this uh, was an idea that Paul had about, uh, I think, what, during one of the American tours, a fan no, it did was, this. Uh, was it any no, truth no. in that? It was when Paul and I went to America to publicise Apple about two years ago to announce the opening. And we were just in the, the flat we were staying in, and he just came out with that line, you know. She came into the bathroom window, so he'd had it for years, so he, he eventually finished it. And so this was another song that was sort of started back yeah, then? Yeah, most of them are, you know, except for the You Never Give Me Your Money and uh, Golden Slumbers. Mm. So she, she came in through the bathroom window to yes. look out. On to Golden Slumbers and um, strings this time, John. Yeah. Um, Paul laid the strings on after we'd finished most of the basic track, you know. Yeah, it seems to me that uh, I think a lot of people had expected that you would perhaps become more complex with, um, you know, musical additions on this LP, but... Uh, well, I don't know what, you know, they shouldn't expect anything. I personally can't be bothered with strings and things, you know. I like to do it with the group, you know. Yeah, because... Uh, whatever, it... all, all with electronics, you know. In I can't main... be able to go into that hassle with musicians and all that bit, you know, it's such a drag. I'm trying yeah. to get them together, but Paul digs that. So that's his scene. Yeah. So, the, you know, it was up to him where he went with the violins, really, what he did with them. And I think he just wanted a straight kind of backing, you know, nothing freaky. You know. The White Trash have made a single out of this, folks. <laughs> And uh, will the, have they used good strings too. on it? Or yeah, what? they've used strings and they've done some... It's pretty similar to the track we did, except they've done some nice things with a big organ, like a church organ playing a solo or something. That is also rather different for them because they've been enormously sort of gutsy and... Uh, yeah, well, they've done it quite gutsy. You know, the song is sort of vaguely uh, gospel-y in a way. You know, sleep, little darling, don't you cry. All that bit is a bit gospel-y. And uh, were any of you involved with the production of this? Or? Uh, not of the white trash, no, they did it completely. I don't know who produced it, you know. But they had a good start, you know, the 
Beatles album. <laughs> yes, it's true. So it's. Uh... They've done a good job of it. I hope they get a hit. Right. So uh, we'll hear the, the Beatles singing Golden Slumbers. Get to the track now called Carry That Weight, which I think sort of features everybody. Yes. That's the sort of. Uh, what's really like the Maxwell Silver Hammer story again, really. Like, we've all got a great load to carry, you know. But that's part of Golden Slumbers, really. Yeah, well, yes, yeah. It's, it's a sort of a logical follow, isn't it? Yeah, it's, a, it's sort of the one song, really. That's the sort of chorus of Golden Slumbers. And uh, I, this has also been covered by somebody I read. Well, no, it's White Trash has done... Uh, we keep going back to this all the time, yes. but they, they've done Golden Slumbers, including Carry That Weight, you know, as the one song. Oh, I see. Right. And uh, was this one that you, that you all wrote, or was this a...? No, it's Paul's line. It's Paul's line. Fine. As far as I know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's told you otherwise. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it could be George or Ringo's role, I know, but I presume it's Paul. OK, Carry That Weight. And now we sort of move fairly logically to the end, which, yeah. um, which was well, just a way to finish it up, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, get out of that. Uh, uh, yeah. So we got a way to close the show. Yes. Yeah. And uh, there's really not much more to be said about that, but uh, we will come back after we... What about uh, Her Majesty? Well, why don't we play the end first and then... Uh, OK, right. Well, then we'll let the silence run and do that. Oh, yeah, so you're going to do it properly, OK. OK. Well, Her Majesty's a very fine girl, and one day I'm going to make her mine. It's got to be a fairly strong line, I think. Actually, when the double LP was released at the time I did a similar program with Paul, yeah. he played this to me. Oh, did he? At that time, yeah. In fact, it was on that tape uh, when we were sort of just getting levels and things. And, oh, I see. Uh, well, this, I think he did it again for this. Uh, uh, yes, well, I'm sure he did, yeah. but he decided sort of threw it away. Yeah, he's had it round. You know, we, we, had, we always have tons of bits and pieces, you know, lying around for years. I've got stuff that I wrote around Pepper, you know, just still... Because you start to lose interest in it a bit after you've had it for years, so I've never recorded it. Do you ever sort of consider, uh, you know, giving this material to, to anybody else to yes, record? Yes, I or? keep meaning to... There's just one particular song I keep meaning to make a demo of, you know, to give to somebody or other, but I never get round to it, you know. So no doubt somebody will hound me for it now. <laughs> yes, I'm sure they will. The fact that Her Majesty wasn't, isn't listed on the sleeve is... Uh, is there any particular reason? Just, just we like to have a joke at the end, you know, or a surprise, like on the end of what was, was it, Pepper or the Beatles? Um, the Beatles double, just something. Like, yeah, there was one on the end of Pepper, I can remember. Yeah, and uh, wasn't the which was, was something at double was speed? That, yeah, or was that the like one everybody that? thought was something obscene? Yes, that's right. And yeah, never it was, was, you know, all sorts of conjecture if about you that. Play it backwards and all yeah, that. Yeah, all that scene. Yeah. Well, we listened to it backwards. It seemed to say something obscene, but we had no idea. <laughs> It's just one of those things. So this is another one of them, you know. OK. John, thanks very much for uh, giving us the time. It's a pleasure. I'll enjoy listening to myself in bed. Fine. <laughs> and to the um, just be before we close, is, uh, you can perhaps let us know about the uh, the next for uh, you and Yoko, which will be oh, the, yeah. the wedding LP. We've got a, a wedding album, it's called, you know, uh, coming out in the middle of October, and it's... It's got a lot of pictures and cartoons and press cuttings and things like that written about us there. And some pretty frantic sounds on it. On one side is our heartbeats and us two yelling, you know, that's the description of it. But it, it really makes your hair stand on end. So <laughs> you'll hear that in October, you know. Fine. And uh, a single in Britain for the Beatles, is that anywhere uh, near the drawing board yet? Well, if... If there's something and come together and goes out in the States, it might come out here too, you know, because usually we don't normally have singles in the States without having them here. But I don't know, it's all in the air, you know. Well, I'm making a Plastic Ono single, if that's of any interest to you. Apple is becoming terribly productive all of a sudden. Well, it? we have so many songs, you know, we've got to True. get them out somewhere or other. And it's nicer to do them yourself, actually. I prefer doing my own songs yes. than giving them to somebody else, because yeah. half of them. It's only the way we, we make it happen, otherwise it's a pretty... Nothing happens to the song, you know. If you gave it away without doing the arrangement, uh, yes. you could kill it, you know. Right. We'd either have to record the whole song and the person ourselves to get it to sound like we imagine it, yeah. to give it the full potential, or just trust the luck. Okay. John, thank you very much. A pleasure, Tony.